What's up, Canes fans? This is the Canes Insight Daily Podcast. Got a loaded, loaded show for you today. I'm going to take everybody to the bank. Was gathering information, trying to get up to speed on where we at right now at recruiting, uh, also with the portal. So we got the absolute latest, most accurate, most fresh information on Miami's recruiting class, and we'll be giving that to you exclusively for free. Canes Insight Podcast, also on canesinsight.com in written form. Also going to talk to Pete who's right now producing, but he was out there at Pro Day with me watching UM's latest prospects. He's going to give you his input and what he heard from talking to some of his old NFL buddies, scouting people, et cetera, just the latest buzz on Miami's prospects and what he was able to observe while he was down there. First, I want to talk about our friends at Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys, the absolute best in the business when it comes to accidents. Listen, if you get hurt in an accident, you may be entitled to significant compensation. This is big money. You don't want to put that opportunity to be compensated for your injuries in the hands of a rookie. Go to the absolute best. Go to the experts. Anna Jar and Levine, 1-800-747-FREE. That's 1-800-747-3733. Take back control of your life. Call Anna Jar and Levine. Also want to talk about my friends at Caneswear. Absolute best when it comes to Miami Hurricanes apparel, Miami Heat apparel, Miami Dolphins, Florida Panthers. They're rolling. You can get their stuff. Inner Miami if you're a soccer fan. There's a whole pink section there of inner Miami stuff, just absolute heaven for a Miami sports fan at Canesware in Arrowhead Plaza and Davy. But if you're out of town, no worries. Canesware.com. You can get everything there right from a click of the mouse. Canesware.com. Go there today. All right. So the bank, people have been asking me, when's the bank dropping? When's the bank dropping? I didn't want to send anything half-baked. Wanted to get the right information, most up-to-date, comprehensive information that you can't find anywhere else. So did that. Made a post on canesinsight.com. The forums are going insane. If you're not on the canesinsight.com forum, sign up for free. We've got 6.8 million posts and counting. So if you want to talk about some of these kids, go to that board, please. You will not regret it. You'll be addicted. But let me get into the players. You know, I've come on this podcast before and said, hey, listen, I'm hearing some buzz that this could be a good three-week stretch or 10-day stretch for Miami. And more often than not, you see that result of commitments. I know with JoJo Trade and Artavius Jones committed, we told you first on the Canes Insight podcast that there was some, some good news ahead. I'm hearing that this late March, early April period could be a hot one for the Miami Hurricanes in terms of commitments. Right now, the commitment list is a little light, good players, but light. I expect that commitment list to look a lot thicker after this early April, late March period. So Miami is going to be, in my what I'm hearing, looking for some commitments in the near future. So stay tuned to canesinsight.com. And I'll give you some names to keep an eye on, just as far as names where Miami has a lot of momentum. Number one, uh, Chris Ewald, corner out of Chaminade. Gerard Pringle, who we've talked about in the past, uh, running back out of Armwood. Canesinsight.com was the first to report that interest. This is a speedster. He's visiting again this weekend. Guy Miami really likes, can bring some explosiveness to the room. Floyd Bucard, we talked about after seeing him in the Under Armour game, me and Pete, or at the Under Armour practice, I should say, the camp. Defensive tackle from Montreal, Canada. Super athlete. He's been on campus a bunch. Miami's picking up a lot of momentum there. Tyler Williams, we had a podcast about him on Friday. His second visit to Miami was during spring break. If you want to watch that podcast, go to the YouTube channel. He had some unbelievable highlights yeah, his junior year. Very talented athlete at receiver from uh, Riverview, Florida. Miami's got a lot of momentum there. Tylon Lee, who we'll talk about a little bit later, defensive end from Pace, Florida, big athletic guy. Miami's making big moves with him. And then Ter Taryn Hendrick, a new name for me. Sorry, Taryn Hedrick, a new name for me, an offensive lineman from Community School of Naples. Pull up his video now. This is someone, again, this is a newer name to me, but I'm hearing that Miami has a lot of momentum with Taryn Hedrick. Uh, this is big guy, 6'5", 305, super athletic. He's picked up offers from Florida, Kentucky, Texas A&M, Michigan State, Iowa State, and of course Miami. He's picking up a lot of steam just because of his size, his athleticism, plays for a smaller school, dominates at that smaller school level, but it's the physical traits, the athletic ability, the size, not a not a you know, overweight frame, but a guy with some size and the ability to put on some good quality weight. We know Maribal loves just big athletic dudes that he can mold. He's identified this player this is someone who's been on campus. They were able to size him up in person, get a feel for the player. They like what they see physically, which is important. And again, this is someone who may not be the highest rated guy right now, but you look at the offer list and the speed at which he's picking up offers, there's a reason. 
big athletic guys like this don't come around often. Smaller school, that's probably why you don't hear about it as much. More of a, from what I understand, more of an upscale kind of 40, 50K a year type school. So the competition might not be the best, but the size is the size. The athleticism is the athleticism, and they like the kid. So he's one to keep an eye on. So I just listed, again, Chris Ewald, Jared Pringle, Floyd Bacard, Tyler Williams, Taron Hedrick, Tylon Lee. Some names to watch for the Miami Hurricanes as far as potential commits in the near future. Now, this one I have to talk about. This is a portal kid. Everybody's been asking me, what's going to happen with Cormonica McLean? We're reading rumors. There's a big thread on the Canes Insight message board, 100,000 views almost, about where Cormonica McLean is going to transfer to. Is he going to jump in the portal? And I don't know if he's jumping in the portal or not, but what I can tell you is I do not expect Miami to have interest in Cormani McLean if he jumps in the portal. There was a lot of red flags during his recruitment. I think Miami feels that those red flags came to bear at Colorado. And as talented as this player is, I think they've seen enough of the Cormani McLean experience. If he could put it together somewhere else, great for him, but I don't expect that to be at the University of Miami. All right. Running back wise, I expect Miami to take two running backs out of high school. Three names really jump out. Two have already been on campus before. Alvin Henderson out of Alba, Alabama. What extremely productive player, one of the most productive players in the country on the smaller side, plays at a smaller school, but extremely productive. Big name, highly rated recruit. And then again, Jared Pringle, who I mentioned earlier, speedster out of Armwood. Those are the two kind of smaller backs. Henderson probably is a little more size than Pringle, but the two smaller backs, I think Miami really has a lot of interest in, and Miami has a lot of momentum with both of those players. Could see one of them commit to the Canes. One name that is a newer name, but I want to really highlight here, Jasper Parker. This is a running back out of Marrero, Louisiana. He's going to be on campus this weekend, New Orleans area. This is a basketball player. As from what I understand, a very good basketball player, smooth athlete, a lot of comparisons in the area to Matt Forte, who you may remember went to Tulane, then went to the Chicago Bears, and was a great player for the Chicago Bears for many, many years. A lot of people in that area who saw both of them in high school compare Jasper Parker to Matt Forte. Not a big recruit right now, three-star, but he just picked up an Alabama offer, so this is a guy that's blowing up with his ability. Miami is in on him. He's going to be on campus this weekend, and some people think that when he gets here and they see the size, they see the kid, 4.0 student, watch some of the film. He's going to fly up the board. So he's a name. He hasn't been to Miami yet. He's coming this weekend, but he's a name to keep an eye on just because of the talent and the interest from Miami and the fact that he's visiting. I think two running backs in this class. Could it be a guy like Jasper Parker? Who, again, he hasn't been to Miami yet. So his interests we're still figuring out, but someone like that with an Alvin Henderson or a Gerard Pringle makes a lot of sense. They want two backs in this class. One uh, other name that I want to focus on, on the other side of the ball, a linebacker, TJ Alford out of Barrow Beach. He is 63rd overall player in the composite nationally, very athletic linebacker, uh, played at John Carroll, transferred to Vero Beach, 6'2", 210. Last year, he was the Treasure Coast Defensive Player of the Year, 114 tackles, 12 tackles for loss, six pass breakups, four sacks, three quarterback hurries, INT. Vero Beach had a very good season. Very athletic guy. Ohio State's in on him. I did not think Miami was at the forefront earlier in the recruitment, but I think Miami is making a surge. He'd be one to keep an eye on. Miami already has a commitment from Elijah Melendez. They're in on, on Zayden Walker from Georgia, Gavin Nix from IMG, Ty Jackson from Loxahatchee, who's a super athletic local player who's going to be at practice later this week in Miami. Another name to keep an eye on. Ezekiel Marcelin, who we've talked about. We have an interview with him on the YouTube channel. Central linebacker, smart, instinctive guy. Those are the names of linebacker. These are big, big time players at the linebacker position. Elijah Melendez is already in the boat. Keep an eye on TJ Alford, top 70 player in the nation overall. Be a big addition to Miami's class if they can land him. And if they do land him, they're not done at linebacker. They're going big game hunting at the linebacker position. Portal wise, I expect a running back. I expect them to aggressively pursue a running back. I expect a big defensive tackle in the portal. And I think wide receiver and defensive back. One or two wide receivers, one or two defensive backs. 
the focus at those positions are going to be guys who can either play man coverage on the defensive backside or beat man coverage on the wide receiver side. That's the focus with the portal. They need more guys who can man up and they need more guys who can beat man coverage. Specific skill set at both of those positions. D tackle, I think a bigger guy. They have some smaller athletic guys now. They want to get bigger. And then running back, they want a big time player. So I expect those positions to be uh, the focus of the post spring portal. You don't know who's going to be in the portal. So all you know is what you need, right? I think those are the positions that you need. Moving back into the high school ranks, want to talk about tight end. There are a lot of tight ends on Miami's board. That is probably the biggest position on Miami's board as far as guys that have interest in Miami and guys that Miami really, really likes. I wanted to zero in on a couple, or really one guy. They're going to take two. They're going to take a, a most likely a bigger inline guy and then a, a smaller, more athletic guy. It, big inline guys, you're talking about Luca Gilbert, who did an interview with Kane's Inside. You can check on the YouTube. Hayden Bradley, same thing. Both big athletic guys, great kids when we talk to them. And then they want a smaller, more of a receiver. Uh, Marshall Pritchett from Georgia, lacrosse player on the skinnier, thinner side, but very, very athletic, very productive receiver. He's a guy Miami likes a lot. And then to me, the, the prize of the whole thing, at least in my personal evaluation, and I know Miami really, really likes this player, is Brock Schott out of Indiana. This is a guy, 6'3", 215, plays basketball, also plays on defense, has a linebacker offer from Notre Dame. That's how tough and athletic this guy is. Look at the numbers, 35 catches, 74, uh, 743 yards, six touchdowns, other side of the ball, 67 tackles, 32 for a loss, 19 sacks. So this is a guy, you know, just you watch the film and fall in love with the football player, with the athlete, the versatility. Is he an inline tight end, 6'5", 260? No, but this is a guy you could use as a weapon. You look at uh, Georgia, what they did with Brock Bowers. He was a tremendous weapon for them. Could this guy play a similar role as uh, a weapon, an offensive weapon for the Miami Hurricanes? Certainly has the athletic ability. Certainly has the football playing acumen to make an impact. Miami really, really likes him. He's coming back this spring for a visit. They would love to land that commit. It'll be a Miami, probably a Miami-Ohio State battle, but Miami really likes this player. Another name Miami likes, kind of top of the board kind of guy, offensive tackle, Jalen Matthews out of, out of Tom's River. He'll be visiting uh, soon. I believe next week, Jalen Matthews will be in town and it's going to be a priority visit. This is a top of the board kind of guy. There aren't that many Francis Malanoas. There aren't that many Samson Okalolas in this class. Jalen Matthews has been identified as one of the big athletic guys that's really special in this class. They love him a lot and they're going to have to fight off Georgia and teams like that for him, but never count out Cristobal and Mirabal when it comes to an offensive lineman. Going to the edge position. This is someone I talked about earlier, Tylen Lee out of Pace, Florida. He is a teammate of Grant Wise, who is probably one of the top 2026 offensive linemen. If that last name sounds familiar, Ty Wise was a center when I was uh, in, in junior high. Really, really good player. I think it might have been high school. Really, really good player, tough player. His son has that same toughness or probably even more upside athletic ability. Grant Wise is a 2026 top 50 type player. His teammate, Tylen Lee, who they're close, very, very impressive frame. Talking to people about him, they say he's built the way you want these kind of defensive ends, these edge players to be. He looks like a Georgia type player, um, you know, an Alabama type player, the guy you see in the college football playoff. I mean, needs to get to that point, body type wise. Tylon Lee fits the bill. A little raw, but had production. You're talking about 61 tackles, 20 TFLs, five sacks, two forced fumbles. And again, you see on the film, this guy can can move, and he's and he's a big athlete. Another edge to keep an eye on, someone who hasn't gotten a lot of hype, but is locked in for an official visit on June 22nd. Herbert Scroggins of Savannah, Georgia. Goes to military school, really athletic guy, plays basketball. Again, not someone you hear a lot about, but he's someone who has a lot of offers. He's getting more offers every single day, and Miami really likes this player. At the edge position, they are looking for athletes. They're looking for length, and both Tylon Lee and Herbert uh, Scroggins fit the bill. Miami hit a home run last year in the edge with Marquise Lightfoot, Booker Pickett, two guys who really tore it up in the all-star circuit. They've shown, I think, the ability to evaluate this position. Lightfoot was a big-time player, and Booker Pickett was a four-star, but when they went to the camps, or sorry, when they went to the Under Armour practices, the all-star games, and the Army All-America game, they were unstoppable. Their stock rose 
to a five star in Lightfoot's case and to a very high four star in Pickett's case because they performed so well and were so dominant in those games. That's good evaluation of the edge position. These two guys, just watching the film as, as Pete plays it back there, you could see why Miami sees upside in these players physically. Moving uh, to defensive back, a couple names that we talked about already. Ben Hanks, the, the corner out of Booker T. Miami's great on him is sky high. He's up there with DJ Pickett of Zephyr Hills as an elite, elite top of the board talent. Tore up the UA Combine. We had uh, Coach Duasso on the podcast last week. You can see that on YouTube talking about Ben Hanks. Also talking about Drake Stubbs, the safety out of Jacksonville Mandarin. Probably the best safety in the country or close to it. Coach Duasso broke both players down. Both guys are sky high on Miami's board. Check out that video if you haven't seen it. Going to finish here with two cornerbacks, defensive backs that Miami really, really likes who maybe are more under the radar, but when you dig into the profile, you see why Miami likes these guys. They have a Sunday type of profile. I'll start with Shamari Earls out of Chester, Virginia. This is a guy who's got good grades, plays offense, 715 yards catching, eight touchdowns, then returns, had a touchdown there, three interceptions on the defensive end, 6.36 in the 55 meters, very, very explosive in short area, and it matches the jumps. You like when the sprints match the jumps because that shows the overall explosiveness. 23 and 10.75 in the long jump, won the state title. That's a top 10 number in the country from Shamori Earl. So this is a super explosive, versatile defensive back with big upside. Those are the numbers that you, you see when you go back and look at these guys that get drafted. How did they put up these huge combine numbers? Well, look what they did in high school on the track. Look at the, what they did on the football field versatility-wise and playing different spots. Shamari Earl is very, very intriguing from a region that we've been trying to get into. I know Go Get it on the Canes Insight Forums, one of our more knowledgeable posters, has been screaming, let's get into that Virginia area. Those are cities. Those are kids that will like Miami. A lot of talent there. Shamari Earls would be a great, great get. Uh, another area that Miami loves, we just talked about earlier, Louisiana. We talked about it. Um, the running back position. Now with the defensive back, Aiden Anding out of Ruston, Louisiana. Again, the, the the recruiting ranking right now, these things change, not the highest, but look into the profile. Defensive back MVP this past spring of the Under Armour Dallas camp. 15 points on the basketball court a game. Shoots threes. First team all basketball. I'm sorry, first team all district in basketball. State qualifying the long jump, 22 and 2.5. Not as, as great as Earl's, but a very, very good number. And you watch the tape. He's a sticky player, similar to Ben Hanks, true corner with the athletic testing to back it up. So you're seeing the names that Miami's after. They're after some big blue chip guys. Your Ben Hanks, you know, your Drake Stubbs, your Alvin Henderson's guys with a lot of recruiting rankings. But they're also finding guys that are going to be the next risers in the recruiting rankings with a lot of verified measurables and in the portal again they're aiming big they want a superstar top and high-end running back who's going to be a franchise type back it's not going to be easy but they're going to fight for it and i wouldn't count them out they just did it at quarterback um and then you're talking about wide receivers who can beat man coverage man coverage ability at the defensive back position big defensive tackle that's what you're looking at the portal to supplement what could be a really, really good high school class. And like I said, stay tuned to canesinsight.com. Like and subscribe to this podcast. Sign up for the forums. You get everything immediately. If a, if a recruit sneezes on Instagram, it's on the Canes Insight forums right away. It's addictive. If you want immediate information and banter and funny, really funny people uh, on those boards, sign up today. It's all free. And we're going to keep it coming, man. But these next three weeks, late March, early April, I expect some action. You'll hear about it first on the Canes Insight Podcast and canesinsight.com. That's been the bank. Now we're going to transition to Peter Ariz. He was at the Miami Pro Day talking with NFL people. He is a former agent, so he's been in that world. He's been at Pro Days for the last five years, the combine, you name it. Familiar setting for him. Now he's going to tell us kind of what he saw with his eyes and what he heard with his ears as far as Miami's players on Pro Day. All right, Canes fans. Peter Ariz here bringing you the latest from Pro Day, as D Money said. Both of us were out there, had a chance to get amongst the scouts and obviously saw some things with our own eyes, but getting the opinion from the people in the league and pro day is an opportunity for some of these guys who didn't have the best outputs during the combine, right? To get another opportunity in front of these scouts 
testing wise, um, not only in the on field drills, but of course the measured stuff. Um, so today, Cam Kitchens, who as everyone saw, did not have the best 40 time out there in Indianapolis. And like I mentioned on the podcast last time around, his ankle was not 100% getting closer to that. And he went out there today and ran in the 4.56, 4.57 range, which was a very good time for him improving upon that 4.65 from the combine. And again, with Cam, you understand if you're a team, what you're getting in terms of football IQ, the character, what he's bringing to that locker room. Um, so the 40, he was never expected to be a blazer, but he went out there today and I think solidified himself as the top draft pick from this Miami draft class. I see him going in that late second round, early third round range. So top 100 pick without a doubt, based on what I have been told. James Williams dealing with a groin issue did not test today, but something interesting as you, you see, obviously, a lot of scouts out there, but other than the scouts who are out there, and Antonio Pierce, head coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, was out there, had an extensive conversation with James Williams, who, again, by the numbers of the combine, didn't blow it out of the water for the safety position. But you have to understand he's a scheme fit, place like the Raiders, a coach like Antonio Pierce, who can really put his arm around a guy and... With James Williams, you have to understand what the potential is, what the ceiling is there for him. So interesting to see that. Really had a conversation like 10, 15 minutes. It seemed like um, just one-on-one -on -one there. And look, every team's going to have that opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one with these guys. But for the head coach to be there and pull them aside, um, it, it was cool to see for him. And that's what all these guys are going through in this process. Talking to James' agent, Yossi Bahar from Goal Line, said that James really put on weight, good weight, quickly when he got into his training program up around that 230 range, which is heavier than he played at Miami. And just seeing him out there, you can tell he's filled out you know, pretty easily and carrying the weight well. So that's another thing that goes into it is him – putting this weight on and learning to move with that weight. Um, so James Williams, a guy who in the right scheme, right fit, could be a very special player at the next level. I, he could go anywhere from that, you know, fourth round, late fourth round range to later in this process, right? It's going to come down to a team that, that really, that really trusts what they can, what they can get out of him. JV on Cohen didn't have a complete workout at the combine. So I had to do a lot of that stuff again today. I don't know if uh, he tested all that well um, based on what I was told, but his film is going to be the number one thing that that speaks for him. Obviously also a, a senior bowl guy, which is a, a huge honor in itself, but I, I'm thinking in that fifth round range for JV on Cohen, of course, started his career at Alabama, came to Miami. And as Jim Nag Nagy from the senior bowl said, has really improved his stock, um, you know, throughout this this last year in terms of the film. And Coach Mirabal did a tremendous job with him, without a doubt. Tyler Harrell, 428 today, which people expected him to put up a good number, but to be consistently in the high four twos there, based on multiple conversations I had, was impressive. Number one thing with him is consistency with his hands. Obviously, there was a reason he didn't get on the field at Miami. The scouts, they they based on what they saw today as well, said there's still some work to do with, with his hands consistency-wise there. But he's going to get an opportunity. 4-2 is 4-2. So he looks the part. He tested very well today. Um, so he's going to, at the very least, get some mini camp opportunities here. Um, and I think there will be a team that that jumps and signs him as a priority free agent uh, at the very least. Leonard Taylor, not to skip over him, obviously did not put up great numbers in Indianapolis at the Combine. Um, was told he got going as the day went on early on in the positional drills. Um, didn't look great, but really picked it up late and improved upon his start for the day 100 i'm looking at the late round range for him as well uh, fifth to seventh round 
So going down the line here, I, I really believe Cam Kitchens again solidified himself as the highest Canes draft pick. And then there's a lot of things up in the air with some of these other guys. Matt Lee, tremendous day of testing from, from what I was told, um, which he had a great testing showing at the combine as well. But it's a, a tricky position. That center spot doesn't have much versatility. He doesn't have much versatility to play a, a guard position. And the teams aren't investing much in a, in a center who can really only play center. You have one starting center. And then the backup most of the time is a, one of the backup guards who can also play center. You only have so many roster spots and you need versatility there. Now, he gets into the right situation. He is a late round pick somewhere. He has the ability to play, but he, he, he's got to have some things go right for him. Get into a place that maybe there's an aging center. He gets an opportunity. Um, you, you never wish for it, but someone goes down in practice and it, it's his game from there, right? It, it's also an interesting position where you don't need to have much, much pedigree. If you go out there and you perform, they'll they'll move on from from the guy before you pretty quickly because you can get some cheap replacements right so matt lee as long as he stays healthy has the athletic profile to play at the next level without a doubt um and great showing again for for him today a couple more guys wanted the spotlight here who i think again may not be draft picks but will have opportunities to play here at the next level Jaden davis who came to Miami from Oklahoma, right? And played a bunch of football at Oklahoma. Comes to Miami probably to play nickel. That was the idea coming in. But out of necessity, you need to play one of those boundary corner spots. Goes out there, runs in the mid four fours today. Had a couple of people notice and tell me that he looked thicker, put some good weight on in this pre-draft process. So he's a guy who whether it's as a priority free agent, a mini camp guy who then gets signed uh, and gets an opportunity to, to get in camp and be on that 90 man roster for training camp and some preseason games guy who had, who played a lot of football played an important role for Miami this season defensively as a nickel in today's game, you need to be able to be physical. You need to be able to tackle, right? So he could, in the right situation, get on a practice squad somewhere and get an opportunity. That's what someone like him um, is probably looking at right now. But mid four fours today looked good physically. So solid day for Jaden Davis to Corey couch. Another guy who has an opportunity to get a mini camp invite, right? And we'll see where it goes from there for him. But trying to think if I miss, if I'm missing out on anyone, KJ Cloyd, they were showing four sixes on the graphic on, on ESPN or, or whoever was broadcasting it. I was told he was more low, low to mid four sevens, right? But guy who plays fast, looks the part physically. D Derek Nicholson brought him over from Louisville, obviously saw something in him, and he showed flashes this year. So every year we know that there's a guy or two that slips through the cracks at Miami, maybe wasn't didn't have the the most impressive career at Miami, but something about them gets them in a camp, gets them a, a, a roster spot late. Maybe it's special teams play. Maybe it's physical ability. A couple guys recently, DJ Ivy last year, a couple years before that, John Ford obviously had the physical tools, right? But there's always someone that slips through the cracks and ends up making a roster or is, gets on a practice squad. Could a KJ Cloyd be that? Could a Jaden Davis be that? We'll see. This is what's fun about following this draft process here. But again, just wrapping things up here. Cam Kitchens, really steady day on the field for him. Retested, looked way better in some of that stuff as his ankle continues to get close to 100%. James Williams didn't, didn't go through drills today as he's dealing with a groin issue. But some of these guys here, I think it's going to be a situation where you see Cam first cane off the board, and then you, you you start to see that run late fourth and then day three there as as the day goes on. But 
Anything that's going on here in the draft process, we'll keep you updated on canesinsight.com. Appreciate everyone for listening in today. And again, social media pages, follow us there. Like and subscribe this video as we're pumping out fresh content for you daily here from the Canes Insight Studios.